that are evident in your sisters. And um, tonight's lesson is about consistency. Consistency. The title is Simple But Oh So Tough. Can anybody relate? Has anybody started with a new year, a new habit slash resolution plan of getting fit and losing weight? And how's it going so far? judge, okay? But he's allowed to be the judge. 
Lesson in that, God causes or allows all things to happen, yeah. good, bad, and ugly, right? Did that stop the widow? Did that stop the persistent widow of coming with her plea day after day after day after day? And we don't know how many days. Maybe it was a week. Maybe it was a month. Maybe it was three years. We don't know. But we do know that Jesus commends her for being regular, for being even, for being steady, for being consistent, for being persistent, that she knew she needed something from this judge, and she believed that eventually she would be given what she was asking for. How about you? Is that how you are in your prayer life? Are you persistently laying your requests, your praise, your gratitude, your thanksgiving before God? Maybe you've never done what we did tonight and pray through the whole church family in Orlando. I want to encourage you to pray for your brothers and sisters in Orlando. The Bible says the workers are few. Pray for them and the harvest is plentiful. Right? When you're praying for somebody, guys, it does a mysterious thing faithful, powerful thing in your mind and in your heart. It shows God that that person is on your heart. I always advise people, if you're struggling in a relationship, which we will, we are all completely different and we were all sinners, right? You commit to pray for that person every single day and you watch your heart completely transform towards that person. It is the spiritual power that God gives us. It's the connection into the energy. It's our source of faithfulness when we connect with the creator of the universe, which is what praying is. When we set up that internal dialogue with God every single day and throughout the day, and we learn to pray consistently and we pray specifically. This woman's request was not, bless me, dear Jesus. Bless me, O judge. No, it was, Deliver me from my adversary, right? What are you persistently and consistently laying before the Lord? Yeah. We know we have the example of the, the Lord's prayer, right? So it shouldn't just be, give me, give me, I need, help me, 911, right? Are you consistently praising God? Are you consistently thanking God? I want to challenge you tonight, ladies, that for the next week, consistently, you thank God for every single person that God has allowed in your life to make you who you are today. The easy relationships, the great coddling, fun, strengthening, and the hard, challenging, difficult, painful, incredibly hurtful things that have, been, have happened to you through your life up until this point, and maybe right now are happening to you. I appreciate what Letitia shared about her work. Isn't it easy to be like, er, I'm out of here, new job, I can't handle this with you all. <laughs> God is teaching us a lesson in whatever situation he has us right now. Are you persevering to learn the lesson and actually change, or are you taking the shortcut, the quick route, the quit, the do it, do it somewhere else, new, you know, turn away and run, right? Those things do not de develop perseverance. I appreciate uh, the prayers about the fitness ministry that Shelly has uh, uh, orchestrated here and initiated. And guys, we know physical fitness, right, is of some value. <coughs> Without consistency and persistence, what does it take to build the muscle? Repetition, consistently, right? If you work out once a week or once a month or once a year, don't bother. You're wasting your time, right? But if you are consistent, how about breathing? Are you breathing consistently? Are you eating consistently, right? Everything we do operates on that mode of do it often, do it consistently, and, and, and practice makes perfect. There we go. There's very much value in what God teaches us here through this widow who persistently prayed. I want to give you three tips to being consistent and three traps to deterring consistency. Okay, three tips to being consistent. At the workshop in the beginning of the year, I talked about having a morning routine. <laughs> I'd like to see if anybody in here has a morning routine. Okay, you follow those people's lives who have morning routines.
proteins, and they are more effective, and this has been proven through many studies and surveys, than the person who doesn't. So my question to you is, do you just think you know better? Do you just think you don't need it because you're different? Now maybe you have a morning routine, you don't realize you have a morning routine, okay? So I'm not trying to tell you exactly what your morning routine should look like, because that ultimately is up to you. Only you know your thoughts and your needs. But sisters, there's something to be said about consistent, even in a morning routine, right? So examine your morning. Praying on your knees, the first thing you do, guys, that's setting up that internal dialogue with the Creator. Is there anything more important than greeting God with a, It's terrific Tuesday, God! Good morning! Do you see how you're setting your mind on God, the Almighty, or, or immediately when you wake up, you open your eyes, you're putting your mindset on something greater than you, something non-physical, which is the creator of the universe. There's nothing better to put your focus onto, right? Then laying your request before God, thanking Him for what this day will bring, good, bad, and ugly. Praying through things, exams, deadlines, work issues, relationships, hard things, easy things, gratitude. You can pray for five minutes. You get up from your knees, you're good to go. You have a mindset already that will completely transform your day yeah. if you choose to do it consistently. You know, I talked about the power of a quick, rigorous workout in the morning. And I talked about push-ups, planks, you know, whatever, <laughs> jumping jacks. There's something to be said about getting your endorphins going early in the morning, okay? And maybe for you that's walking around the block. The power of meditation. Right? Meditation can be while you're doing your hair and you're getting dressed, you're thinking, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Wait a second. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ. Do you see how we are slow? And how do we learn space repetition? That's what meditation is, guys. And in J Joshua 1 verse 8, the Bible says, meditate on his law day and night. All through the Psalms, we see David meditating, ruminating, running the same truth of God through his mind all day long. Instead, what do we do? We ruminate and meditate on the negative. Oh my gosh, what is going to happen? I'm going to fail. I'm not prepared. Oh, this person doesn't like me. Why did they look at me sideways? Oh my... And before you know it, you wonder why you're a nervous wreck. Yeah. And you're having a mental breakdown. And you're miserable. And you're not impacting anybody in a good way. You know how to meditate on the line. Okay? That comes really easily to all of us. And I've been as guilty as anybody of it. But we're not a slave or a victim to it. Yeah. We can choose to be different. Right? So is meditation a part of your morning routine? Your morning exercise? Um... So that's the first thing. Have a morning routine. Make it include setting up that internal dialogue with God. Number two, write down to focus. I want to give you a quick little acronym for focus. F, follow. O, one. C. <coughs> Transformed by the renewing of your mind 
Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Guys, without renewing, which is ongoing, all day, every day, for the rest of your life, privilege, as well as responsibility of a disciple, we will never make it to heaven. You might keep coming to church, giving your special, serving away. You won't have the pure heart for God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, if you don't take mind renewal very seriously. It is how we change. It is how we grow. It's how we become more effective as a more useful instrument for God and his church. We need to be helping each other, talking through these issues. Thomas Jefferson said, in matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of, of conviction, stand firm like a rock. That's very biblical, right? There are many things that are disputable matters. These things we've talked about now, praying consistently, how to be consistent, renewing your mind, these are not disputable matters as a disciple. On these things, sisters, we've got to stand firm as a rock. We can't be going with the current, okay? Because the current of the world does not spell loving God and loving people. So the question is, are you standing like a rock on your conviction, on your renewing of your mind, on your consistency in these areas that we've talked about? If not, you can change, right? Three quick traps that deter consistency. Number one, what do you think it is? Wait a Excuses! Too tired, too sick, too hard, too lazy. I just, I don't feel like it, okay? I ain't doing it. Anybody ever been there? Yes. Every day I battle with, do I really need to do these push-ups? Oh, uh, I'm a little too sick today. <laughs> no! Get down and push up, okay? Get on your knees and pray. It's a decision, not a feeling. The feelings will come. Number two, deterrent, lack of discipline. We know that the fruit of the Spirit from Galatians 5.22 are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. God calls us to grow consistently in each of this fruit-bearingness. If you are not plugged into the source, if you're making excuses, there's no way you're going to grow in being more self-controlled, self-disciplined, right? We also know that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7, God says he did not give us a spirit of timidity. When we got baptized after repenting and believing, our sins were washed away, just like for our sister Paula on Sunday, and she received the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is God himself deposited in you, O woman of God. You don't think that God gave you a spirit that is of love, power, and self-discipline? The timidity, the fear, the inconsistency, that is not from God. Identify it, tackle it, wrestle it out and rebuke it out of your life. Confess it. Stay in the light. Grow. Progress. Remember, there's no such thing as failure as a disciple. Yep. There's only lessons. lessons. Come on. There's only what to do and what not to do, yeah. right? Lessons to learn yourself and pass on to your sister. And the third thing that will deter uh, consistency is rebellion and self-doubt. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, guys. Rebellion is saying, I know better. Rebellion is de dependence on self. And then self-doubt, of course, is I can't, I don't. I want to encourage you never, ever, ever again, and I'm saying never, consistent, to use and believe the words, I can't. Okay? When, you come, when you're talking about something God's calling you to do, I'm not talking about building a house. Okay? <laughs> because that would be a challenge for any of us. <laughs> but I'm talking about overcoming the strongholds that are in our thinking. No, you might be wrestling with being more patient. But I can do all things, include growing my patience, through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. Then you confess it. You get help. You get prayers. You get accountability. You get more conviction from the Bible. And you change. You show God and you show your hearers where your power lies. And you will be amazed at how God grows you. 
and how you continue to shine. And that's why Yana can stand up after four years of being a Christian and say, I'm so happy! <laughs> because it's a superlative happiness that comes from her relationship with God. Yes. Yes. And we've all seen Yana when she's not so happy. Oh, yeah. Because nobody is always feeling happy every single day. Yeah. But it's head knowledge that connects with the truth that brings that zeal, guys. Whether you're feeling it or not, we all have that time of the month. And some have it harder than others. Okay? Amen. But guess what? The Spirit of God gave you overrides that time of the month. And He helps you to push through and deny yourself. The older you get, the more pains are going to come. Right? Guess what? We are aware of that. We do what we can to be the best we can using natural remedies and using the wisdom of the doctors that God allows, getting a lot of input. But then we come to the table and we remember that pain reminds you that you're alive. Pain reminds you that you are not living for this life. That you are living for the life to come. And that loving God and learning to be more and more consistent in these disciplines of what it takes to truly be a disciple of God is all that matters. Guys, there's no business like soul business. And we get to be in the business of winning souls. First our own as we grow and change. And then the souls of whoever God is going to put in our path. People are as open as your mouth is. I want to challenge you ladies. Married, singles, campus, teens, every one of us. We need to be workers for the Lord. We are here to serve him. A servant doesn't expect a wage. A servant comes to the table goes, here am I. Lord, send me. Yeah. Is that your heart today? Let's be consistent. Let's rebuke the deterrence of consistency. And let's continue to make 2020 a year that we're going to look back on. And we're going to see evidence of how we have changed. The miracles that God's done in changing me as I grow in the fruit of the Spirit. And then we're going to see those same miracles deposited into the next Vanessa Lewis. Oh into the next Josie Flowers. Oh 